Where are our real fathers? Where are our grandfathers? Where are our uncles? Where are our elders? Where are the men in our community? Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot, I've been keeping up with your program as promised. I'm up to the overview where you discuss one of your not to do lists. Uh, and one of your not to do's is to not to argue with people online or in real life. I find that I'm not very argumentative at all until it comes to my stepdad. As soon as he brings something up or has a negative tone, I find it easy to have an argument. And sometimes I feel like I'm not able to escape as it escape it because it feels like he may be subconsciously uh, gotten, gotten into my mind, <laughs> right? This is usually the result, uh, this will usually result in worsening of our relationship for a period of time and have me worked up as we disagree on a lot of things, such as how we view the world, moral, political, and ethical concerns. I find it hard not to engage as it seems like with the first statement he makes, he has con cornered me and my only way to get out of it is to talk it through while it's treading on eggshells with what I say. How are you able to not engage in arguments that waste time and is there something you say to get out or do you just let them be right? So man, when I first read your question, it kind of frustrated me a little bit and it, it it has to do with something that is totally out of your control, but it's a part of the way the world is right now. And the fact that you're dealing with a quote unquote stepdad is a very traumatic thing in my, in my opinion, uh, to be dealing with a man who's not your father, but living in your home and screwing your mom. Now, I don't know how long he's been your stepdad and I'm not knocking stepdads at all. What I'm trying to do is empathize with the fact that you're a young man living with a man who's competing for the attention with your mother who isn't actually your father. It's a, actually, a, it, the whole step parent thing is actually a very, uh, it's a very weird thing. It's a very abnormal thing. And the fact that you have, uh, you sort of get triggered by him or he seems to be uh, tr actively trying to trigger you has everything to do with this uh, this dynamic, this this unresourceful dynamic between a grown man and a child, uh, you know, I'm calling you a child. You're the you, you know you're the stepchild, uh, in competition for the attention of a woman, your mother and his, you know, his second wife or or you know him stepping in. And I don't know what the relationship is with you and your your real father, and dealing with a real father is tough as it is. I, when I was young, man, I, all I did was argue with my dad. I, me and my dad never saw eye to eye, right? There was a lot of things that we just didn't, we didn't agree with, and it was more like my, my inability, I was young, I was immature, and many of the things my dad would say to me, I just wasn't ready for. As I grew up, I recognized I was ready for it. But the fact that he was my flesh and bone father, I am patterned after his paternity right he is me i am him uh there's a slightly different dynamic with regard to dealing with him because he's my legit father and the love bond that's there is like none other right i am flesh of his flesh he com i come straight from him i couldn't imagine trying to deal as a young man in my teens or my 20s with the same kind of contention that there was between me and my flesh and bone father uh if it was another, it was just a, a stepfather, a stepman, a step in, right? Someone who steps in, right? As much as animosity as I had towards my father, I love my father like he's my legit father, right? There's, there's, I, it's strange in this world now that I actually even have to explain this, but real parents and step parents are not the same, right? I know that. The feminists will have us believe that, you know, any man who comes in and takes care of my babies is a real daddy. No, he's not. He's, as the term legitimately signifies, a cuck, right? I have step stepfather family members and uh, mixed family within my family. I'm not against those people individually. I'm against 
the, how the system has disintegrated to such a degree that we want to even uh, uphold and praise and clap for the breakdown of the family and the patchwork thereof. It's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. And you are experienced the fruits of this breakdown, right? Again, I don't know what happened specifically with you, with your, with your parents. I don't know where your father is, right? And some people say, oh, it's better to, it's better to have a stepfather than no father at all. I, I don't know. I'm not so sure about that. That's not necessarily my opinion. That's not my opinion. My opinion is, oh, you had babies with someone. Oh, you can't get along with that person's parent. Oh, you have to split with them. Then you stay alone, right? You stay as a mother caring for the children to bring, especially with daughters, right? Like now you're dealing with this and it has to do with, uh, it has to do with, you know, you're a young man and he's a man and there's contention. There's tension there. It has to be tension there, right? But there's another kind of tension that rises with the daughters. I don't know if you have a sister or whatnot, but there's another kind of tension that happens when a woman brings a, another man, a grown man into the house with a, a young lady, with a girl. There have been studies that show that little girls that grow up in homes with fathers that aren't their legitimate fathers are forced biologically, not psychologically, and the man may not be doing anything to, 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 to make this happen. It's just a biological response within the body. It's physiological that that, that young lady's body buds faster because of the presence of a, of a, of a man that's not her father. So she, they tend to get their period a little bit faster. Um, and there tend to be a lot of, you know, struggles. There's a lot of sexual problems. It doesn't mean that there's like open conscious sexual tension between the young lady and the father, but by bio biology does not lie. Biology exposes a whole lot of stuff. And when we go against biology, we can go against the natural law. When we go against what's right and true, we suffer and you're suffering. And I know you're not asking me for my opinion on all this, but when I read your question, I couldn't help but to have an opinion about this. This is why families need to work. This is why patchwork families don't make sense. This is why this whole sexual liberation that, that, that essentially has destroyed the family is not a good thing. I don't care how much uh, the feminists say, go girl. Go girl, you don't need to stay with that man. You can move on. You can move on and, and if, uh, you know, and I see a lot of these, these guys on Facebook or like these guys on Instagram and stuff who like are exposing feminism and all the stupidity. And there's all these, you know, they, they, they like repost these posts where these women are like, you know, uh, flaunting their fake daddy for their babies, right? This is my, this might not be the father of my son or my daughter, but he's the real daddy. No, it doesn't work that way. I get the sentiment and I appreciate your trying but it's not true. It's not true. There's only one true real family. The whole trying to def redefine the family, this falls right under the same, uh, it all falls under feminism, right? Even, even the, uh, a lot of the LGBT stuff if, and, and like gay marriage, all that stuff falls under feminism it, because it's all about redefining the family. It's all about, and that's what feminism's true root uh, reason is is to redefine the family, to restructure the family, to redefine gender roles. When you start messing with that, you get everything, you know, including the LGBT alphabet soup confusion that most people are under. So this is just a byproduct of that whole uh, um, postmodern breakdown of the nucleus of society. We are so weak as a society because we have weak families, we have fake families. Don't say what's fake is real. That's one of the biggest problems in our world right now is that we take what's fake and call it real right down to the most fundamental things like food. Most of the food people eating is not real food. Now there's this big movement, this big push to eating fake meat. Joe Biden talking about people need to eat less beef so that we can eat their soy cricket powder meat. Right? What we call what we're what what is politically correct to call real is 10 times fake nine out of 10 times is fake and what is actually real what is actually real in our world we like to call oppressive or you know um outdated or 
somehow uh, so long, so somehow backwards or not progressive. There's real and there's fake. Real family, fake family. What's a real family? I know that this is going to trigger a lot of people. That's how weird the world is right now. What's a real family? When I was a kid, we could open up a little storybook, and the storybooks would tell the kids, what's a real family? I remember reading these books when I was a kid. There's a mommy and there's a daddy. And the mommy and daddy come together and they make babies. That's a family. It's so simple, but yet we complicate it. We complicate everything. Why do we complicate? So that we could disintegrate. The more complicated things get, the more it's a matter of disintegrating, destroying, breaking down, right? Breaking down what is normal, what is natural. And you're not in a normal, natural situation, even if 60% of the young men are in your, in your place. Just because the majority is in that place doesn't mean it's normal, right? That doesn't make it normal. What makes something normal is when it's right. When it, when it abides by the natural law, not made up stuff in a progressive world. And right now you're suffering as a result and many men, many young men are suffering. You're not the first one to send me stuff like this. Many of the guys in here in this program, they struggle and they suffer because they, they come from fake families, fake, broken, busted up families, feminism. If you want to find a root, and I know I'm ranting a bit here, but you want to find a root of many of these ills, it is found in the feminist movement. It's not about equal rights. It's not. Just like, just like communism isn't about feeding the poor, it's not about feeding the poor. It's about usurpation of power. Feminism is not about equal rights. It's about usurpation of power. It's about degradation and destruction. But it's, it sounds so strange because what the left does is they, they wrap evil in the guise of beauty. Rainbow. I mean, who could argue with a rainbow? It's so beautiful. It's so tantalizing for children. Who wouldn't, who wouldn't say that it's right? They take beautiful things and then they wrap ugliness. They, they wrap the ugliness with it. Feminism's ugly. And, and, and in your situation and the breakdown of the family and the situation that many young men find themselves in and the confusion that is created within a culture, within a generation, such that me, I'm not complaining, I'm filling my role, I'm doing what I'm called to do, but the fact that I even exist as a, as a digital mentor points out the fact that society is suffering. Where are our real fathers? Where are our grandfathers? Where are our uncles? Where are our elders? Where are the men in our community? You could say it's a global community now, but you and me, we don't even really know each other. We're reacting to the same zeitgeist. I'm giving you my opinion while you share your, your struggles. But where are the real men, flesh and bone men? In Iron John, Robert Bly talks about how there is a spiritual food that is fed to young men when they're in the presence of their el the elder masculine, the, uh, the older men in their, in their tribe. Men transfer, listen to this, this is really important. Men transfer their, their essence, their, their wisdom, their presence, not through words as much as proximity being close, being nearby, watching your father breathe. I used to watch my father work. I didn't know what was happening, but the mere fact that my father was there, I remember watching my father work and listening to my father talk to himself while he's working or even listening to my father breathe. I know this sounds strange, but when I was in, when I was in uh, middle school, I used to get punished a lot. My dad used to ground me all the time, right? That's what a good dad does, right? I was, I'm a rebellious kid. And he was like, you ain't going to fucking rebel in my house. And so he used to throw me down in the basement. He used to put my bed down in the basement. He was like, now you're going to live in the basement. And he used to make me live in the basement. Well, guess what was in the basement? Barbells. And my dad would wake up at five o'clock in the morning, go down there and he would be working out while I'm sleeping. And I would hear my father's just that rhythm, just that vibration of my father's breath 
stimulate something within my physiology, my psychology, something beyond words. We got to bring a back the family. We got to bring back men. We got to bring back fatherhood, patriarchy. And that's my greatest hope for you guys. All of you guys that are here with me in this program, even if you don't know what it looks like because you come from this broken, degenerate world, I'm so blessed and I don't take that for granted that I got a mom and a dad and I come from a real family. My father's an alpha male man. My mother is a, is a true feminine woman, homemaker, wife. I don't take that for granted. And it took me, it took me quite a while. It took me until my mid thirties. And I think that when I started going through my quote unquote crisis, one of the revelations that I had when I was in my mid thirties was I'm not like everyone else, not because I'm special, but because I was given a gift. I was given a gift that most young men don't have. And that is a real family, a real father, a real mother. And I, and as a result, I grew up very quickly because it gave, it gave me this sense of responsibility to you, to my family first, of course, but then to the men that follow me because I realized, you know, a lot of the struggles that you guys are having is because you come from poor foundations. Now, here you are fighting with your stepdad. I'm letting out my frustrations right now through this rant, but what you need is to breathe. You cannot engage with him because there's way too much subconscious shadow garbage going on right there and i'm kind of just shedding light on some of it he doesn't belong in your home plain and simple why is this and again i don't know the situation he may have raised you since you were three years old it doesn't matter right and i'm not talking bad about anybody and everybody i'm complaining about the system here you are and you're struggling, you're suffering, you're fighting, you're arguing, you're rubbing, bumping heads with a man that don't even belong in your home. He's not your real father. The only man that belongs in a home with the children is the father, right? Father and maybe grandfather, but that's it. Uncle shouldn't even be in there. Uncle should be nearby. It's great to have uncles by. Uncles and cousins are great. But fathers, fathers, the man of the house is the father. Not a stepfather, not a step-in father, not a fake father, not a boyfriend. I hear some of you guys even tell me, oh, my mom's boyfriend. What kind of fucking man is a boyfriend? That's the kind of culture we live in that you could be 40 years old and call yourself a boyfriend. Right? A 50-year-old, a middle-aged woman could have a boyfriend. That's how immature our view our view on sexuality is. That's how immature we are as a culture when it comes to to sexuality and family. That grown adult people have boyfriends and girlfriends. Boyfriend and girlfriend. Even the concept itself for the youth is wrong, is backwards. It shouldn't exist, but it does. But it's that much more degenerate when it's a freaking adult. So where are we going with this? You say you feel like you gotta walk on eggshells. You feel like when he talks to you, he's subconsciously trying to engage in a battle with you. That may be true, but it also may be true that you're making that up, right? He could legitimately be trying to pick fights with you, right? Because subconsciously he's in competition with you. Who's this man, right? Because now he sees you, you're growing up, you got testosterone coming, you pass puberty, you're, you're, you're becoming a man, and now he's living in the house with, an, with, a, with another grown man who, for all intents and purposes, sh sh shouldn't really owe him any allegiance, except for the fact that you're competing for the attention of the same woman. I would not be happy, you know, God forbid, and you know, anything could happen, anything could happen. But I've had this conversation with my wife and I said, listen, if something happened to you and I, we split up. So this just, say maybe it doesn't, it doesn't work, right? Which in my mind, it's death to us part. Right, death do us part. I am not. It ain't going. It's not going to split that way. But just plain make believe. I said, promise me that you will never bring another man into the house with my children. I won't do that. I won't bring. I'm actually. In fact, if I if something happened and I'm not married anymore, maybe my wife dies. Right, whatever. I'm done with women. I have no interest in women. What the hell am I going to bring women around for? I already got kids. Right. I ain't making no more. What for? For comfort and pleasure and pussy? No. 
if I need if I need companionship, I get another dog. No interest whatsoever. I don't understand these people who, after being married and, and failing, having a family, then they go and get a boyfriend. Anyway, <laughs> let me come back full circle. I'm, I know I'm going off on this. I'm going left field with it. Let me come back home. You may be imagining it too because you got your own shadow stuff. You got your own hangups. You got your own problems with the situation, right? It's a little spooky for a child in a way. So regardless, there's some kind of subconscious tension going on between the two of you and it would be good for both of you individually to kind of question yourself. He should probably question himself as I'm asking you to question yourself. But I'll tell you this, that I do not think there's any, there will be any fruit to engaging with him. I don't, I don't think there's any benefit to engaging with him. Even if you win, do not engage. Your mother's a weak woman, right? So whatever the world, moral, political, ethical uh, um, um, disagreement you have with him, it's a damn shame, right? Because the mom and dad should be on the same page. And I'm pretty sure that your position is more legit than his. Why? Because you're here with us. So is your mother following his, his example? Right? That's another thing. Right? You, have your, you have certain viewpoints, worldview, that may be different from his. And who's your mom? You know, who is she leaning towards? Right? It's good when the whole family's on the same page, but the whole family can't be on the same page unless real mommy and real daddy are on the same page. So it could create a lot of tension. My, and kids will rebel, right? Kids will rebel. And maybe that's what you're doing too. That's why I say check yourself. Kids will rebel. So, you know, my parents were always on the same page, but I rebelled. Me and my wife were on the same page. And my daughters, they rebel, right? Two of them particularly. They do it because I think it gives them a sense of autonomy, it gives them a sense of self so they're not totally swallowed up by the parents. But as long as the parents are on the same page and they, and, and, and they agree, then it doesn't matter. Children, you know, they'll come around at some point, hopefully, like I did with my father. But long story short, bottom line is coming full circle, I don't see any fruit of, uh, of arguing with him. Do not make your opinion known to him because you're not going to change his opinion. Do not counter his argument or, uh, or have to respond when he says something you disagree with. Your best bet is to, is to practice the, ah, oh, hmm, interesting, okay, attitude. Hmm, is that right? Hmm, is that so? This is my, this is my default answer for people these days. Because I don't, argue, like you said, you know, part of the program was don't argue with people, right? Like I said, that was part of my do not do. And so when I get to situations, be it within my family or otherwise, and somebody says something I don't agree with, I don't really argue with people any longer. I, I might ask questions. Huh, well, what about this? Hmm, interesting. And you let them answer the question, and then you ask a better question. Hmm, well, what do you think about that? And if their answer doesn't argue, doesn't uh, jive with what I have to say or what I think, I don't have to prove my point. That's, and it's taken me a long time, fellas. So I'm just kind of like, I'm not bragging. I'm telling you where, you, where you're ascending to, where you're, where you're reaching for. I don't have to prove anything to anybody anymore. I say what I say, think what I think, and I don't have to convince anybody. My mother-in-law is coming here in a couple hours. She's going to spend some time with our family. She is on a totally different planet. Woo! Totally different planet. I try to keep my heart open and accepting. There are certain things she's doing that I think is putting my family in, in, in danger, but I'm trying to be a loving son-in-law. Hmm, okay, all right. I brief my children on it. I let them know why I'm concerned about what grandma's saying and what grandma's doing. So you're just aware. But I'm not gonna fight with grandma. I'm not gonna tell grandma don't come here. I'm, when grandma come here and she, and she start with her stuff, I just say, oh, hmm, hmm, interesting. Oh, is that right? That's one of my favorite phrases. Oh, is that right? Is that right? Is that right? Oh, is that right? When you say, oh, is that right? You asking somebody that they really need to check with themselves. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's right. Huh? Interesting. Is that so? 
Really? Okay. So when he starts up with that bullshit, you go into a you. This is where you know a lot of people they attack me because some of my ads on face, on Instagram are a little. I trigger. I'm trying to trigger people, and you see what this program is about because you guys are here. So I put up stuff that tries to trigger people, and they're like, "Oh, Elliot's hyper masculine, and Elliot's toxic masculine." Well, listen, listen to this toxic masculine guy say that you gotta you gotta balance the feminine energies in there. And some, and you know, energy is, is, is gen, is how you could say the gender, the gender differences don't apply. It's an energy. There's a yielding and there's a, and there's a projecting the, the yielding energy is a feminine energy. The projective energy is a, is a masculine energy. Both men and women have that in them to be yielding and to pre be projective in their thoughts in their language in their words and in their deeds. Uh, but when it boils down to it, our best role is to be predominantly one or the other based on what we got. One of these or one of these. That's the way it works. Masculine, feminine. So I'm going to say this uh, and understand what I mean when I'm saying this, that sometimes it is, many times, it is much more practical to take the yielding road. You got to take the yielding road. Check this out. Me and my brother, when we were younger, we used to play this game called push hands. And we, we put our hands up like this on one another, right? So his hand and my hand, right? And the whole idea of push hands was what? To push and to, and to push the other person over. But it was a strange game in that if you use brute strength, right? Let's say we do this and you got to keep your, you can't like, uh, your feet got to be, be stable. You can't like bum rush and like, you know, run into them. If you try to overpower What's going to happen if you if I try to push and my brother is yielding, he's playing the game right, he's going to go like this. He's going to he's going to yield to my power and then just swipe me away and I'm going to fall on my face. So there's a tremendous power to this yielding. Don't always feel like when you're yielding, you're losing. Right. Two guys who come fight fist to fist. Right. And they both trying to be the projective masculine. Like I'm going to I'm going to go after I'm going to go after they will be pushing and all one has to do is this boom and that guy's gonna fall on his face the one that yielded is the one that wins there's a power to yielding so uh and and it's and it's and with push hands it's like a dance because you want to you want to kind of feel it out right push hands is a beautiful metaphor for for life feel out the situation feel where that person is Feel where they at. Feel where they, oh, you got a little tension right here. Try to exploit that tension, right? Because if they're a little stiff, oh, you're a little stiff right there. It's not going to take much for me to push you over, right? Feel where their tension is because whoever has the most tension in the, in the wrong spot is the one that's going to get knocked over. Oh, you're keeping the tension right in this spot here. I could just, oh, knock you over, right? And being soft the whole time, when you're being soft the whole time and you're feeling each other out, you could catch somebody off guard, right? And this is this is like the the, the true powerful the true power of masculine in, injection, right? Even think about sex, right? Like when you when you when you when you when you're courting a woman, right? When you're dating with a, with a woman, right? I know you guys are out there and you you're being promiscuous, so you understand how to be with a woman. You soft, you cool, right? Yeah, and every once in a while you, mm, oh, feel my strength. But then the rest, you fall back. You soft, you light, you're playing, blah, 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 you're giggling, you make a laugh, boom. And the minute you come hard and you've been playing that soft game, that person whoo, falls back, right? And that's what turns a woman on. That's what turns a woman on when you know how to, mm, at the right time, right? Cool, I'm cool, I'm cool, I'm cool, mm, right? And so it's the same thing. <laughs> I'm, giving, I'm talking a whole lot. It's going to be like a half an hour video. But the point is, my man, that you're in a situation that many young men find themselves in and it's a byproduct of the breakdown of the damn society and all it's going to require is for us to really step up as men, support each other, and share this wisdom. And the wisdom is this, that you don't want to go head-to-head. -head. You don't want to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It's not, you're not going to win going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. You want to play push hands. And that means yield, 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 yield until that person falls right on their face. And that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen here. You just, uh-huh, uh-huh, mm -hmm. oh, interesting. Ask the right question, watch him fall on his face. And you don't do it because you need to win. You do it because it's a dance.
done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from the coaching sessions that I have every week with my King Transformation students where among other things, we get together for about four or five hours a week. We talk all things related to becoming kings in our lives in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G. Me and my team will get back to the details and see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.